Hi guys, welcome to today's session. Thank you all for your responses on yesterday. And our yesterday's quiz question was, State of India's Environment Report is released by which organization? So guys, the correct answer here is it is released by Center for Science and Environment. So that is the right answer. Let's now start today's session. First question for the day, JIJT task force recently seen in the news is constituted for option A, NPA recovery, option B, issues related with age of motherhood, option C, COVID vaccine development, and option D, Atmanurbhar Bharat implementation. Guys, the correct answer here is it is option B, issues related with age of motherhood. The terms of reference of uh, JIJT task force are to examine the issues related to infant mortality rate, maternal mortality rate, total fertility rate, sex ratio at birth, child sex ratio and any other issues pertaining to health and nutrition and also to suggest measures for promoting higher education among women and another terms of reference is to suggest suitable legislations and amendments in existing laws and also chalk out a detailed rollout plan with timelines to implement these recommendations. So that was uh, terms of references of uh, JIJT task force. It was recently uh, constituted. That's why this question is asked. Moving to the second question. Second question is with reference to non-permanent members of UNSC consider the following statement. Statement one. There are 10 non-permanent members in UNSC. Statement 2. The tenure for each non-permanent member is 2 years. And Statement 3. Non-permanent members are elected by the permanent members of UNSC. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. Option A 1 and 2 only. Option B 2 and 3 only. Option C 1 and 3 only. And Option D 1, 2 and 3. Guys, the correct answer here is it is Option A 1 and 2 only. Third statement is wrong. The United Nations Security Council is composed of 15 members. Out of uh, 15 members, 5 permanent members are there that are uh, China, France, Russia, United States and United Kingdom. That are the P5 members, permanent 5 members. And there are 10 non-permanent members who are elected by United Nations General Assembly. That's why statement 3 is wrong. They are elected by United Nations General Assembly. And each of these 15 members has one vote. And the non-permanent members are elected for a two years term. So every year, the UNGA, that is General Assembly, elects five non-permanent members out of total 10. And these 10 seats are distributed among the regions of the world. Five seats for African and Asian countries, one for Eastern European countries, two for Latin American and Caribbean countries, and two for Western European and other countries. And of the five seats for Africa and Asia, three are for Africa and uh, two for Asia. Also, there is an informal, informal understanding between Africa and Asia Pacific groups to reserve one seat for an Arab country. So this group takes turns every two years to put up an Arab candidate. And recently, the election for five non-permanent members of UN UNSC held and India elected as the nominee for the Asia Pacific seat. So that's why this question is asked. So it is very important this year India elected as non-permanent member. And guys, it's time for a quiz question. There is one comprehensive convention on international terrorism, which is proposed in United Nations General Assembly. This treaty intends to criminalize all forms of international terrorism and deny terrorist terrorist their financiers and supporters access to funds, arms and safe havens, etc. So our question is, which country proposed comprehensive convention on international terrorism in United Nations General Assembly? Please post your answers in the comment section. We will now move to last question for the day. Last question is with reference to direct seeding of rice DSR recently seen in the news. Consider the following statement. Statement 1. In this farmers prepare nurseries where the party seeds are first sown and raised into young plants. Statement 2. The first irrigation under DSR is necessary only 21 days after sowing. So which of the above statements is are correct? 
ഓപ്ഷൻ എ വൺ ഒള്ളി ഓപ്ഷൻ ബി ടു ഒള്ളി ഓപ്ഷൻ സി ബോത്ത് വൺ ആൻഡ് ടു ആൻഡ് ഓപ്ഷൻ ഡി നൈൻത്ത് വൺ നോട്ട് ടു ഗൈസ് ദ കറക്റ്റ് ആൻസർ ഹിയർ ഈസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഓപ്ഷൻ ബി ടു ഒള്ളി ഗൈസ് ഫാമേഴ്സ് ആർ നൗ ബീങ് എൻകറേജ് ടു അഡോപ്റ്റ് ഡയറക്റ്റ് സീഡിങ് ഓഫ് റൈസ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഡി എസ് ആർ ഇൻ പ്ലേസ് ഓഫ് കൺവെൻഷണൽ ട്രാൻസ്പ്ലാൻറ്റിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ദ മെയിൻ റീസൺ ഈസ് ഡ്യൂ ടു ലാക്ക് ഓഫ് ലേബറേഴ്സ് now we will see the difference between the normal transplanting paddy method and uh, the dsr that is direct seeding of rice method in transplanting paddy method farmers prepare nurseries where the paddy seeds are first sown and raised into young plants the nursery seed bed is 5 to 10% of the area to be transplanted and uh, these seedlings are then uprooted and replanted 25 to 35 days later in the puddled field that's how this transplanting paddy method works and if you see the direct seeding of rice method there the pre germinated seeds are directly drilled into the field by a tractor powered machine and there is no nursery preparation or transplantation involved in this method farmers have to only level their land and give give one pre sowing irrigation and as you all know paddy being very much water intensive and is compromised by weeds that compete for nutrition sunlight and water and in transplanting method for the first 3 weeks or so the plants have to be irrigated almost daily to maintain water depth of 4 to 5 cm and the advantage of this is that water prevents growth of weeds by denying them oxygen in the submerged stage whereas the soft arenchyma tissues in the paddy plants allow air to penetrate through their roots and water thus act as a herbicide for paddy but in dsr method as flooding of field is not done during sowing chemical herbicides are used to kill weeds that is the only difference uh, and uh, the advantages of uh, dsr method is that uh, there is water saving is there less number of labors are required it saves labor cost it reduces methane emissions due to a shorter flooding period and decreased soil disturbance compared to transplanting rice seedlings so that is the difference between the normal transplanting method and uh, uh, our dsr method that is direct seeding of rice and now the farmers are being encouraged to adopt this dsr method So that's it that's all for today guys we'll meet tomorrow with another set of questions please post answer to the quiz question and your scores in the comment section thank you for watching